Um, and um, I, I guess I will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, if, if you could stand um, wherever you are. I uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And uh, item number three. Um, okay, I think I'm supposed to read this first, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, this is not the instructions about people who could you call in. Don't we have that? Okay, so, um, all right, I'm just going to go into um, item number three, resignation uh, for information only, uh, Affordable Housing Committee, Walter J. Dunn, um, uh, his uh, resignation date was effective June 4th, 2020. And um, item number four, is Mr. Melchick on the line? Yes, this is Doug Mitchick. Oh, hello. Okay, How so item number four, to hear and consider and act upon the following appointment. Harbor Management Commission, which requires RTM approval, Douglas E. Metchick of uh, 1201 Oldfield Road, a term from 1119 to 1121 alternate to fill the vacancy for Cheryl H. Beacock, whose term is expired. Can I get a motion to approve? I will move to approve this item. This is Nancy. Thank you. Second it. This is Tom. Is there any discussion on this item? There is only to say that I'm so thrilled to appoint Doug Metzik to serve as an alternate on the Harbor Management Commission. I've known Doug much of my life. Um, he is fair. He is honest. He is not partisan. He will do what's in the best interest of the harbor. He's a lifelong sailor and just a thoughtful, sound, level human, and I'm so happy that he's going to invest his time in making Fairfield just a little bit better. So thank you for serving, Doug. Thank you, Nancy. That's very kind of you. Well, uh, uh, welcome, Mr. Uh, Melchick. I haven't had Metchik. I haven't had a chance to meet you, but I look forward uh, to meeting you, and I appreciate your willingness to serve our community. Me too. I look forward to meeting you as well, and I look forward to serving on the uh, committee. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this, sir, and best of luck. Thank you. All in favor of this item? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, Mr. Metchik. Thank you. Okay. We'll move to item number five. Uh, Julie DeMarco is on the line, and this is a director of human resources, human and social services, requires Board of Finance and RTM approval to hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the director of human and social services. Whereas, as part of the Bigelow Center for Senior Activities five-year bus replacement plan, it is in the best interest of the town of Fairfield to expend up to sixty-seven thousand six hundred ninety-six to purchase a wheelchair accessible motor vehicle to improve mobility for seniors and individuals with disabilities. Fifty-three thousand six hundred of said purchase is to be funded by a transitional. 5310 Capital Senior Bus Grant under Section 5310 of the Federal Transit Act's Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities Program as administered by the State of Connecticut. And now, therefore, be it resolved that Brenda L. Kupchick, first select woman of the Town of Fairfield, be and hereby is authorized to accept in the name of and on behalf of the Town of Fairfield a traditional five. 310 Capital Senior Bus Grant in the amount of $53,600. Further resolved that the appropriation of up to 67696 be and hereby approved, and further resolved that the first select woman is hereby authorized on behalf of the Town of Fairfield to sign and execute any and all necessary documents to secure said grant. Um, do I have a motion to approve? I will move it. This is Tom. And I'll second it. This is Nancy. Okay. Uh, discussion? Questions? 
only in as much as um, Julie, if, if she has anything to add. Um, I do. We, this is a grant we apply for every two years, um, and we're in the midst of one that Brenda just signed and we sent up last week for the next cycle. Um, the difference between the grant is the grant is the fifty three thousand six hundred is eighty percent of the cost of a bus. Um, in the supporting documents, you can see that we were responsible for four, for thirteen thousand four hundred. We um, increased that because they installed a plexiglass shield to divide the driver, or, you know, separate the driver from the um, riders. Um, and the fourteen thousand ninety six, um, which is the twenty percent plus the shield comes out of our donation, so there's no cost to the town. Thank you. Uh, thank you. This is uh, Tom. How are you? Hi, great. How are you doing? Good. Hey, um, for you, how many vehicles are in your fleet now? Five. So these buses, every two years, if we're lucky enough to get a bus, we rotate the oldest bus out of um, service. So it, it keeps us on track. We have a um, five-year, I mean, a, a, it's like a seven-year life cycle for the buses. Um, I think in the supporting right. documents you have the um, vehicle inventory, but if not, I can send it to you. Yeah. So we've got we've got five, how many and how many are used at any one time? Is is five used and one is sitting there for spare parts and things, or what happens to the one you take out of rotation? Just so that we know. Um, typically, when we're not in COVID, we have three to four buses on the road each day, usually four buses, and then one is, um, we rotate through okay. those, so one is um, usually sitting there just in case. Right. And they're all handicapped accessible like this, is that correct? Yes. Yes, all of them have lifts. Okay. And they've all basically been done under these grants that are about 80%, and, and we, through your donations, uh, typically get the other 20%, correct? So this is kind of standard. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks so much, Julie. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Item number six, Director of Human and Social Services requires Board of Finance and RTM approval to hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Human and Social Services, whereas the Federal Transit Administration Section 5310 Program Enhanced Mobility of Seniors with Disabilities uh, offers grants through the State of Connecticut Department of Transportation, whereas the Town of Fairfield is applying for approximately 27552 and the funding shall be used for salary maintenance and fuel, and whereas grants are to be used for capital and operating expenses for public transportation services and alternatives beyond those required by the Americans with Disabilities Act designed to assist seniors and individuals with disabilities, and whereas the Town of Fairfield would submit an application for funding to enhance the Bigelow Center for Senior Activities transportation services by filling in the gaps in the public transportation in the town of Fairfield by going beyond services required by ADA, ex ex servicing eligible riders not within a three-quarter mile of the bus stop and expanding operating hours to enable additional services. And now, therefore, it be resolved that Brenda L. Kupchik, first select woman of the town of Fairfield, be and hereby is authorized to accept in the name of and on behalf of the town of Fairfield a matching federal transit administrative grant in the amount of $27,552 and further resolved that the appropriation in the amount of $27,552 be hereby is approved and further resolved that the first select woman is hereby authorized on behalf of the town of Fairfield to sign and execute any and all necessary documents to secure said grant. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second that. Discussion, questions? I'd, I'd like to explain that, this one the, a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Please, sorry about that. This, um, it's a new grant for us, and um, I, I, I don't know how it's going to be. What it allows us to do is 
um, to provide additional services. So our hope, what I put in the grant, and I think you have the grant attached, is that we would run doctor's appointments, medical appointments for later in the afternoon. Typically we're done, we have to wrap up by 2.30 in order to get the buses back and inspected and everything wrapped up. But if we can allow seniors to have appointments that go a little later, it provides another opportunity for them to to um, be seen by doctors or stay longer or not worry about not being able to meet the bus. And it also is, the grant is also allowing us to provide when we're open on Thursday nights transportation for those who um, can't drive at night or can't get down here. It, the way the grant works is that it's, two, it's a two-year grant. Um, we submit quarterly to get reimbursed um, the monies that we've spent on those hours. So if we don't, you know, it's, it, we may not use it all this year because of COVID, but it'll roll over to next year. Um, and I don't know if we'll use it all up. These are, these are services we've never offered, but rather than hire a driver and say, we're going to do this, this grant allows us to try it and see if it's something that is worth investing in for the senior center permanently. And I, I think it's a great way to give a shot to how, you know, give it a try, how we're going to expand services or try to do on-demand services. We're just not there yet, but it's a great opportunity to try things. Hey, Julie, I have a question, uh, if I might. And Nancy, I'll defer to you if you want to ask a question first. Um, no, thank you. Quick question, Julie. It sounds like yeah. you're going to use this, which sounds like a great um, potential service to, to expand it later in the day, as you just said, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in the past, when we've tried things as a town, at least when I was on the Board of Finance, we would try something, then all of a sudden, a year, two years later, when the funding ran out for whatever reason, the department head would come back and say, oh, by the way, we're essentially committed to doing this because we've already started doing this. Mm -hmm. Is this one of those times, or is this going to be one of those, we are literally trying this out, and if for whatever reason it doesn't make sense to continue doing it, you won't come back on it? In other words, are we committing future town funds by making this, or is this a trial basis? It's a trial basis. I, I don't know if it, if people are going to come out at night um, to expand the right. hours for for medical appointments, even for work, because we do um, bring some people with disabilities to their work sites, and they have to end when we end. Um, I don't I don't know if it's going to make that big a difference. I don't know if it's if it w will make any difference, or if it will make an amazing difference. Say it, say it takes off. Say people really like that they can right. have a, a ride to a doctor till four. We can work with the driver's hours we have now to adapt. You know, we can have somebody start at noon rather than start sure. everybody starting at 8.30. So I don't see a long-term problem with if it does work um, because we can, right. we can shuffle hours. And especially because we're not um, we're not using it right. We won't be using it right now if, if we're not opening until at least September. It gives us a, a little bit of time to, to get into place what we want, what systems we need to do it. It's a great question, Tom. Right. I hope I'm not coming back to you in two years saying, oh, my God, it was amazing. We really need to offer these services. I need, I need a new driver. I, I don't anticipate that, but I, 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 yeah, I don't no, know. And, and, again, I just – yeah, no, Julie, and thank you, and thanks for the honesty of the answer. It's, it's just, again, in the past, we've been asked to do things where we didn't realize we made a commitment. That was an ongoing commitment, right? And so that's why I asked the question. It sounds like a, a good opportunity, and quite frankly, I hope it's very successful for you. So thank you, and I applaud you uh, trying it out. Yeah, thanks. No further questions from me, Madam First Okay. Uh, Selectwoman uh, Lefkowitz, do you have anything? No, that no, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, hearing uh, no further uh, comments, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you, Julie, very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have a good day. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Item number seven. Director of Community and Economic Development uh, requires RTM approval to hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Community and Economic Development. 
resolved that the applications received under the Neighborhood Assistance Act, NAA program, and hereby approved, and that the Director of Community and Economic Development is hereby designated as the municipal liaison of the Town of Fairfield for this program. Do I have a motion? I'll move, Dana. I'll move. Uh, I'll second. Okay, I'm opening it up. Mark Barnhart is on the line if anyone has any questions. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about this program right now, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, this is a state program. Um, it provides businesses that offer um, charitable contributions to uh, programs that are approved by the municipality that are run by either a nonprofit or municipal agency, a state tax credit against their corporate tax liability. Uh, there are no town funds involved in the program. Uh, our obligations are to uh, solicit applications if we wish to participate in the program, uh, solicit uh, and vet those applications, approve them, um, following a public hearing, which we held earlier today, um, and then submit those to the Department of Revenue Services uh, for their consideration and approval by the uh, deadline, which was extended this year because of the pandemic to July 31st. But um, you know, we will be presenting this uh, hopefully with your blessing to the RTM later this month to make sure that we get those in on time. Got it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Nancy, do you have anything? Okay. Um, can can people mute their phone if they're not speaking, please? And I okay, um, I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries uh, unanimously, passes unanimously. Item number eight. Director of Community and Economic Development requires RTM approval to hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Community and Economic Development. Resolved that the program year 46, October 1, 2020 to September 30th, 2021. Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, is hereby approved in the amount of 550,000, which includes entitlement grant funds of 521,653 and program income of 28,347. And further resolve that Brenda L. Kupchik, first select woman of the town of Fairfield, be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all necessary documents that facilitate the town's participation in said CDBG program. Do I have a motion to approve? This is Nancy, I'll approve. Do I have a second, Tom? Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Madam First Select Woman? Yes. Uh, this is Mark Barnhart. Um, I think there might be a typo in here, uh, and perhaps that uh, must, be, must have been something that I submitted. I think the program income should be 23,847, uh, uh, not 23,347. 23 what, Mark? Eight eight forty seven. I think those numbers are transposed. Okay. Is so, my math um, correct? Uh, the t the total between five twenty one six fifty three and twenty three eight forty seven should equal five fifty. So, I'm just making sure I added this up right. We're checking. I apologize for that. I just want to make sure. No, it's, 20, that, it's 28, that 28. No, it is that right. Comes it up, is right. Sorry. 
I'm yeah, looking at because that comes down. So twenty eight three forty seven is correct. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any questions for Mr. Barnhart? Just is there anything he wants to add? Hi. So I just I, I know the board is uh, familiar with this program. We're an entitlement community under the Community Development Block Grant Program. We receive funds every year from the federal government. Uh, through the Department of Housing and Redevelopment. Uh, this, uh, this past month uh, came to you with a substantial amendment to our existing uh, program year uh, to provide funds under the CARES Act. This is actually our regular entitlement grant uh, for the program year that begins October 1st uh, this year, 2020. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we need to uh, satisfy several uh, objectives. Um, it is... Um, discretionary dollars uh, that we can use for eligible purposes, but it does need to meet a national objective as indicated in the material I sent to you. We did conduct a public hearing as part of our citizen participation plan and uh, attached are the um, allocations or proposed allocations that we uh, wish to use uh, community development block grant funds for the upcoming program year. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Flynn? I'm good, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Barnhart. Um, all in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Thank you very Great. much. Well, that's very good. This will be good for our community, and um, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mark for your time. Item number nine. Town Planning and Zoning Commission requires RTM approval. To hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Town Planning and Zoning Commission. To hear, consider and act upon a request to abandon the remaining portion of the town owned Paper Street known as Cherry Street, which intersects with Kings Highway as shown on the attached map reserving, however, an easement for a sewer, the location and dimensions of which shall be, as determined by the town engineer, which easement shall be recorded on land records of the town. Do I have a motion to approve? This is Nancy, I'll approve. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, discussions, questions? We have uh, uh, Director uh, Jim Went on the line and Attorney Pete Ambrose. Um, can they talk about this a little bit? Because I didn't fully understand it, frankly. Sure. I can. This is this is Jim Went for the record, and, and and Peter, if you want to expand on anything I say when I'm done, feel feel free. Um, Thank you, Kim. Uh, Cherry Street. Uh, literally a paper street, and by that I mean it's it's a right of way on paper, but has never been developed as an actual road. Um, it lies. It's a 50 foot strip of land, approximately 175 feet in length that's between um, businesses that you may recognize as a circle collision and Fairfield automatic transmission. It's a 50-foot swath of land that's never been uh, improved. The road continued further north, and in 1980, uh, the northerly 118 feet of the right-of-way was previously abandoned uh, to a family that owned all the adjacent land at that time. There was a second kind of parallel street called Willow Street, again, a paper road never been uh, improved. It was abandoned in 2009 uh, in conjunction with the development of the Bed Bath & Beyond uh, site. So this is a, you know, it was a mapped out road that never got built. Uh, and for years, the two adjacent businesses have kind of been occupying it for storage and parking their cars. This petition, and I'll let Mr. Ambrose expand on that, would, uh, would allow the, uh, those adjoining, uh, adjoining businesses to take ownership of the property and use it and, and get it on the tax rolls. I just have one uh, clarification. The, 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 the call does talk about a sewer. I just want to, uh, to uh, clarify that that's a storm drain. It's not a sanitary sewer. It's a, uh, a storm drain. It's a 24-inch storm sewer, so a drainage easement will need to be reserved over the strip. Uh, that's all I have, unless there's any further questions, and, uh, and unless Mr. Ambrose has anything further he wants to add. 
Yeah, thank you, Jim. Uh, I'd merely like to add that <clears throat> this, uh, this strip of land has not been used intentionally at one time. It would have extended well past um, Bed Bath and beyond, um, and that, um, uh, as Jim said, in 1980, the uh, the <clears throat> major part of this uh, uh, Pent Road was taken uh, by uh, by Bed Bath and Beyond. So we're requesting that the town release the balance of Cherry Street, um, and it will go on the tax rolls, and it will be shared between uh, my clients, uh, who are the family. Uh, um, circle Collision and um, a Fairfield Automatic Transmission. Uh, it will raise uh, some some taxes for the town of Fairfield, but uh, at the present time, both of these business entities that have both been long-standing entities in Fairfield uh, will share this 50-50 this um, And I think essentially that's that's it. I think uh, it's fair to say that. Uh, it will allow both businesses to operate in a more efficient manner, and um, it would. Um, the property is now dead ended, and um, really has no um, uh, use to the town of Fairfield. Thank you. 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 Thank that will remain on the property and we'll have to do an easement agreement. Any other questions? Uh, this is Bill Hurley, Town of Fairfield Engineering Department. Uh, Peter, I just wanted to, if you can pass on, if this does get approved, that you can pass on to the uh, property owners that uh, they should always keep the uh, manhole exposed so that, you know, for in the event that the town needs to get in into that manhole for any, you know, potential blockages or whatever, that we could get into it, you know, and have access to it. That's the only thing. And that would be part of the drainage easement language, I'm sure. Uh, yes, and uh, that's well known by us. We did, we were able to uncover that uh, drain and, and locate that drain bill. They removed uh, enough of the uh, weeds around it to do that. So it's now, uh, it's now accessible. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions either. Okay, very good. Seeing no further questions, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, thank gentlemen. You. Thank you. Item number 10. Well, thank you, Jim. Purchases. I'll be in touch with you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Item number 10, purchasing authority. To hear and consider and authorize the purchasing authority to enter into the proposed contract with Commercial Roofing and Contracting Incorporated, Putnam, Connecticut to provide all labor equipment and all, all else necessary to perform the replacement of selected roof areas of the Osborne Hill Elementary School as detailed in bid 2020-87 for a total amount not to exceed 943000 in additional, with additional authority to execute change orders to said contract in the amount not to exceed 94 300 combined total, not to exceed 1,037,300 funding for this contract is available in account number, uh, you can all read it. Um, do I have a motion to approve? This is Nancy, I'll, I'll uh, move to approve the item. I'll second it. Discussion, questions? We have uh, Gerald Foley on the line from Purchasing and Angelus Papa George and Sal Morbido on the line. Um, this is uh, Gerald Hello. Foley. If you... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is Gerald Foley. If you want, I can give you a, a, a brief overview on the bid. So what we had is we went out to bid for uh, the replacement of the roof at Osborne Hill Elementary School. We had six bidders on this particular project, 
um, what we did is, is that this particular project is reporting to a, um, a building committee, so it's a special project standing building committee. So uh, my office, the purchasing department, in addition with uh, Sal Morbido from Pearfield Public Schools, and then the project architect, um, the gentleman's name is Tom Hibbard for Hibbard and Rosa. What we did is for expediency purposes, what we do is we, we, have, we go through all the bid submissions, and then what we're going to do is we're going to present from our offices a uh, kind of a, um, an evaluation of the bids and a recommendation of an award to this special project standing building committee. So if you see there's, there is six bidders, and if you look at the, the, the base bid amounts, you'll see that the company that we're recommending was not the, the lower lowest bidder, and that's why I'm elaborating to kind of give you an overview on that. So what happens is we for this particular bid, um, the the low the low bidder was a company called uh, Young Developers. Uh, they bid nine hundred and forty thousand dollars, and then the next bidder was a commercial roofing and contracting, which is the company we're recommending. If you go to the second line in the bid, there's what we refer to as a bid allowance. And an allowance is basically, it's not a fixed number, but it's a number that the company's included in their bid to perform different work. So the company Young Developer, they only included an amount of $6,600 in that amount for an allowance. So in our review of their submission and what we have, we have takeoffs in that particular work, uh, we deemed that particular number to be non-responsive. So what we did is we eliminated them from consideration, and then we moved over to, to commercial uh, roofing and contracting. And what we did is we vetted all their numbers. So when you go down and you look at their numbers, um, you'll see – Halfway through the, the the response sheet, there's a series of items to the left. First, one, one of them starts with repair and patch. The next one below it is uh, repair wood blocking, and the one directly below that is raise existing roof line. So anyway, th those those items there's they they repeat themselves due to a, just a clerical error in, in terms of the bid form. So the company, you'll see the, the first one is $8 a square foot, then it's $5 a square foot, and then there's a, a following by an amount of $140 a foot. Directly below it, there's a number of 800 that is that was wrong. The, the contract we verify with that with the contractor. The numbers above it are the correct numbers. Um, so anyway, so in our review of of the, the, the that particular company, what we did is we called all their references um, and we validated um, all of the items on their bid. Um, and based on that, we made the recommendation to the Special Project Standing Building Committee, who re-reviewed all of our information and they they in turn uh, recommended an award to commercial roofing. And then uh, from there, um, the purchasing authority recommended that award and then we're forwarding it to uh, the, the Board of Selectmen for additional uh, review and approval. So hopefully I've, I've got it all there. I figured if Sal, Morbido, or Angelus wants to chime in, they could, they could add additional information if they wanted to. Uh, this is Sal Morbido. I don't have anything to add to that. So, so this is all within the approved amount for this project yes. right now? Yes, correct. Yes. yes and the change order, go ahead. I was going to say, even with the change order, we're still well within budget. And the change order amount okay. is only because... Because of roof work, there's always little nuances. So um, my thought was is to go forward. The intent is not to necessarily have to spend all of that money, but to have it in reserve in the event that we do have something. Um, the other quirky part of this is that we try to do all our roof works to the schools during the summer months when the schools are not in right. session. So it's a very quick, quick process. So what we th our thought was is to have that money in reserve in the event that something happens, um, you know, we have we have that money that we can go back to and, and uh, augment the contract if necessary. Is it are you anticipating something happening? I guess I'm no, a little bit no, lost. no, no, no. Well, what happens if if you go right? So what happens is when you're doing repair and patch of roof, there's an allowance again included within the yeah. base bid. So if if all of a sudden we go and we pull the roof back and there's it turns out that there's a bigger area that needs to be fixed. So 
hence the, there's where it's covered. Or if there's, say, you pull it black uh, and there's, again, above the allowance amount, there's more blocking. It has to be um, done. Our biggest exposure is, is in that third item that I'm alluding to, that raising the existing gas line. On the top of Osborne Hill, what happens is yeah. there's a gas gas line that runs up the side of the building and runs across. Um, our calculations are approximately 420 feet of gas line has to be raised. And, and what happened is, is the roof deck, that what it'll do is now, due to the um, increased standards of insulation, what we're doing is we're putting approximately four inches, four inches of insulation on top of the, the roof deck. So the roof deck there, I, I'm not sure the exact amount of insulation, but I know it's not four inches. So what happens is when you add this on there, that gas line, it has to be raised in order to accommodate that insulation. So when you raise the gas line, that's the amount that I was alluding to above, that, that, that which uh, commercial roofing, um, they have the amount of $22,000. Uh, in our review, we calculated that that amount should be about, about $50 a square foot. I'm sorry, $50, $50 a linear foot. And when you do the math on that, that works out in, perfectly or per, or within our standards. Um, but the other company, the young developer, um, it, there's not enough money even to, because what you do is when you um, change this particular gas line, you, there's mobilization, there's purging of the line, there's testing of the line, and that amount would be maybe 6000 But it, you couldn't do all this work for 6000 It's just it's not enough money in, in that bid. So the, the variance between those two companies was, was only $3,000. So uh, our interpretation and our evaluation based on this is that we were putting the town at more risk to pick them because that we know that cost is going to go up and we, and we know it could or could potentially go up um, so our variance of 3,000 uh, we thought that it was well within our interest to to select this uh, roofing commercial right. roofing and contracting what was the total estimate that was approved for this project um, I don't have. Um, it was. Right. It was. I can sal, jump sal, in. Yeah, please, sal. I can jump in, Gerald. Thank you. Uh, hi, Sal Morbido. The uh, the approved amount that we have on this project is just a hair over 1.4 million. That includes uh, work for the architect, a right. contingency, and obviously the roof work. And what does this bring it to? Is it are we at 1.3? Where are we at with all this? What what the what the uh, we're we're uh, when you add the two we're just over one million so we we're going to have quite a healthy contingency you know even even beyond all the, the those two pieces we're going to have uh, we have the architect um, they were uh, approximately thirty thousand dollars it was less than that I'm just rounding so we we'll we'll have uh, well in well in excess of two hundred. Almost three hundred thousand. We'll say two eighty, two hundred eighty thousand, over and beyond all the money that we potentially have allocated. So, the, like I said, okay. a very healthy reserve, and we're hoping and nothing contract, major goes. Yeah, and the contract has been vetted by the town attorney. Yes, yes. Uh, Jim Baldwin has. We sent him a copy, or I sent him a copy last week, and he he's review, reviewed and approved it. I believe Jim is on the line. If he can yeah, yeah, chime in too. This is Jim. That's correct. And all the all the required insurances and and guarantees and all that are in place, correct? Yes. Th once we once we fully execute the contract, we'll have the appropriate insurance, and we're going to have all the bonds. All all the ducks will be in a, in a row. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have any additional questions? Nope. Thank you. All right. Well, seeing no additional questions, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion uh, item passes unanimously. And we thank are you. on to, uh, thank you, uh, we are on to item number 11, purchasing authority. To hear and consider and authorize the purchasing authority to enter into the proposed amendment to the expiring transportation agreement with first student in accordance with the governor's executive order number 7-R. Uh, may I have a motion to approve? 
I'll approve it, Nancy. Tom? I'm sorry, I said second. That was on oh, mute. Okay. Sorry. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? We have Doreen Munsell and Gerald Foley on the line for this item. Just to speak to it briefly. Uh, yes, this is Doreen Munsell. Um, this agreement reflects um, the, the numbers that we agreed upon in a meeting with um, Mr. Flynn and Mr. Baldwin and um, Mr. Bremer and myself. And um, first student is aware of these, uh, the amendment and the um, language and is in full agreement. Great. And Jim, the, the legal language is consistent with all that we had discussed, so I'm following. It is. It's uh, pursuant to our discussions, it is consistent with all that. Great. Any other questions or comments? No, thank you. All set. That's great. Okay. Well, all in favor then? Aye. 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 Thank you. The item passes unanimously. Item number 12. Uh, we have Gerald Foley, Brian Carey, um, uh, uh, Bill Hurley may still also be on the line uh, to hear and consider yep. and authorize the purchasing authority to enter into the proposed contract with Malone and McBroom Incorporated to provide all labor materials and equipment and all necess else necessary for phase two of the Rooster Ris River feasibility study for the total amount not to exceed 304,360. Do I have a motion to approve? Yeah, I second it. It's Nancy. Very good. I'll open it up for questions. Anything the group on the line wants to add? Um, I did talk to, uh, this is Bill Hurley, Engineering, I did talk to Malone and McBroom and uh, try to get a little bit of clarification on the uh, contract. They were willing to uh, change a little bit of the language, and um, they just asked that the um, uh, town attorney, um, you know, let them know what changes he, he suggested. Uh, they mentioned that uh, they've had 28 contracts with the town in the past, and this is kind of uh, similar to those that they've done in the past. Um, there'll be no sub-consultants, so it'd strictly be um, Malone and McBroom uh, doing uh, the design work uh, for this project. Hi. This is so the town attorney. Tim. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, um, I just want to clarify on, on, on why Bill uh, referenced that, because uh, when I looked at the standard terms and conditions, I didn't find it to be satisfactory, um, and, and I would like to make certain changes. I just got a hold of this document late last week, and obviously uh, with the time restraints and, and the desire by uh, Bill and his team in town to move forward on this project, I would uh, ask that the Board of Selectmen consider uh, approving this item subject to those standard terms and conditions being uh, satisfactory to the town attorney. In other words, based on further negotiation, none of the terms are, are material to the issues before you. It's really just kind of classic contract uh, matters that, uh, that should be worked out pretty easily. I think we need to amend this motion then, right? I think that's correct. What would you recommend, uh, Jim, the language for amendment? Uh, the uh, subject, the, with the contract being subject to town, of, town attorney's approval. Someone so make that I, a motion for that amendment? Yeah, so I can move to amend as Attorney Baldwin just stated for the record. And I will second it. And just to be clear, it is um, adding to the end uh, amendment that's uh, subject to approval by the town attorney contract. Yeah, subject, subject uh, the terms and conditions, uh, the standard terms and conditions uh, 
which shall be subject to the town attorney. Okay, very good. That should so be, we have a, yeah, that should be the standard terms and conditions should be what's stated, correct? Right, because I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, looking to change other aspects of what's before you other than those. So we have a motion for the amendment and a second. Um, so can we, uh, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 That was both of us. So now we have an amended uh, item. Uh, that uh, uh, to hear and consider and authorize the purchase authority to enter into proposed contract with Malone McBroom to provide all labor materials equipment for all else necessary for phase two of the Rooster River feasibility study for the total amount not to exceed 304,360, subject to the approval of con subject to the contract being reviewed and approved by the town attorney. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Um, I'll second it as Nancy. Thank you. And I just uh, would like to just personally say that I was uh, um, happy when uh, Bill Hurley, you know, wanted to put this on the agenda because this has been a long, long, long standing issue for our town. Um, the Rooster River issue has been extraordinarily complicated and um, there, were, there were quite a few meetings the last time we had the flooding down all along the river and obviously uh, we've had some challenges uh, the last four months with the pandemic, but I am um, I'm, I'm happy to see this starting to move forward. It's a very important issue that we should all be focusing on, um, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, start the process of beginning to resolve this longstanding issue. And I hope to be able to meet with the surrounding uh, area leaders in Trumbull and Bridgeport to have more in-depth conversations of how we can start to work together um, to fix this issue, because obviously this is not just a Fairfield, you know, problem. This is, starts in Trumbull and comes through Bridgeport. Um, so we kind of all, we not kind of, we actually need to all be together on this for the long-term solution. So thank you, Bill, uh, for your well, work thank on this. Thank you. I also want to thank, you know, Jim, Jen, uh, Gerald, and, and Brian for helping uh, present this uh, item on, on the agenda that I was uh, out for a couple of days last week with no cell service. So I do appreciate their efforts as well. You're welcome. So with the, with the exception of the comments that Attorney Baldwin had, all the other points on this contract are acceptable, Jim? That's correct. And these monies, as I saw the broken record here, but this has all been set aside, Bill. This is within the budget that was put aside for this? Uh, that's correct. What was put aside for this in total, do you recall? Uh, yeah, uh, 320000 Okay. And how long will this work take? Uh, prob probably six to 12 uh, months, depending on uh, uh, if we have to secure certain permits. Got it. Thank you, sir. And and thanks for bringing that up, because uh, also uh, after uh, these are all been designed, we will have to go back and select or prioritize, e you know, each project, or maybe we'll do a couple at a time. Uh, where, um, you know, we'd have to go, obviously, to the uh, Board of Selectmen, uh, Board of Finance, and RTM for the actual construction of these. But the uh, design does, will include for everything to go out to bid, construction, the details, specifications as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Is there any additional comments or questions? Not for me, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Uh, item passes unanimously. Thank you, Bill. All right, thank you, everyone. Cool. Item number 13, Fair TV Commission uh, Chair Stu Stresler and Jerry Spina will call in for this item um, to hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Fair TV Commission. 
Resolved that Brenda L. Kupchick, first select woman of the town of Fairfield, is empowered to execute, authorize, and approve on behalf of the town of Fairfield a professional services contractor agreement between the town of Fairfield at Sullivan Independence Hall, 725 Old Post Road, Fairfield, Connecticut, uh, and Gerald Spino with an office at 23 Plum Street, Fairfield, Connecticut, contractor for professional technical services supporting the town go town's government and education television stations known as Fair TV's broadcast system, Fair TV, for a period of one year commencing June 30th, 2020 and terminating July 1st, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second it as Nancy. Any questions or uh, comments? We do have Jerry Spino on the line, and I think we also have uh, Fair TV. Uh, Stu Strelzer is on, yes. Hi, Stu. Hello. So this this is pretty standard with past practice, no? Yes. We've not changed anything since uh, we've been doing this. And it's on an annual basis? That is correct. Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, if there's no further comments, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, everybody. Thank, thank you, you guys. Um, you, the item passes unanimously. Uh, Item number 14, to consider and act upon tax refunds as recommended by the tax collector in the amount of 51812 Do I have a motion to approve? This is Nancy. I'll so moved. Move. I'll second it, Nancy. Thank you. Any discussion? Sorry about that, Nancy. All good. Any, any, any questions or comments on this item? None for me. Okay. Uh, all in favor of this item? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And so item number 15, I'm just going to give an update um, on COVID on COVID and some uh, various town issues. Uh, I sent out a newsletter on Friday. Um, with um, some information um, and updates on COVID. Our town currently has 640 cases, 292 recoveries, and sadly, 338 deaths. And those numbers, though, continue to trend downward and is uh, a bit of positive news. I do, though, however, want to uh, send out a call of action here um, that um, that people be very cautious. Uh, I am getting more and more reports uh, from email and Facebook messages and, and alike and uh, that uh, residents are very, very concerned about when they're visiting the beaches or when they're walking around in town or whatever they're doing, uh, that less and less people seem to be uh, wearing face coverings. And uh, it is of great concern to the members of our community, by and large, a large majority of our community who is concerned that as we reopen, um, people will be just more lax in their uh, uh, taking the CDC guidelines seriously and they're concerned about a resurgence um, of the virus uh, in the fall. So uh, I just wanna th please uh, highlight that and so that people are aware of it. Um, and share that please, uh, uh, Board of Selectmen members, uh, anywhere that you can uh, in your social media circles and anywhere else um, that is, is vitally important um, um, and uh, that that this is uh, not the time for us to be relaxed in any way, uh, shape or form. I may have inadvertently said we had 338 deaths. I meant to say 138 deaths to COVID. Um, on June 17th, the state guidelines for phase two reopening uh, go into effect, and we have been working uh, really quite a few, uh, I can't tell you how many hours, uh, putting together um, plans and to, to assist with that reopening on various levels that are included in the 
phase two uh, reopening. I am proud of our emergency management team and the planning committee uh, who have been working so much, so many hours to safely, to be, make sure we're doing so safely and in compliance with those orders. Uh, the town of Fairfield is offering a summer camp child care option this summer, which by the way was no easy task because the executive orders on this had changed uh, quite a few times and we had to shift around to ensure that we could uh, comply and do so in a, a positive way for our children and their families. I just really want to uh, uh, thank uh, the Park and Rec Department and the Director, Anthony Calabrese, who has done yeoman work, not just on this issue, but many issues uh, that pertain to the many executive orders that we have been receiving. Um, I've received, uh, I want to note that I've received an, a, a quite a, a large amount of emails from parents uh, who are expressing their unhappiness that a summer school will be taking place virtually. We were under the impression when we were planning our camp uh, programs that we were allowed to use some of the schools because there would be summer school and we were under the impression that summer school would be taken, taking place in person. And so I just wanted to share with both of you that I've received a lot of emails from families who weren't happy that summer school was taking place um, virtually instead of in person. Um, and many parents also expressed that their students were falling behind uh, due to the whole virtual learning. And I know everyone has worked really hard in our school system to deliver that uh, since we had to shut down from the pandemic. But I did think it was important to note it to both of you and in public because I have received so many. Um, However, the town uh, stands, remains ready, and has remained, has uh, stood and remains ready to help the Board of Education in anything they need, and also to reopen this fall for uh, in-person learning for our, our students. I will provo provide more updates this week with regard to openings uh, in a newsletter, so please stay tuned for that. And if anybody isn't signed up for it who may be listening, it's very easy to do. Just go on fairfieldct.org and you can sign up right there in the beginning of the home page. I would like to uh, talk about um, the events of the last several weeks and um, uh, regarding the murder of uh, George Floyd and the Brent. response from our uh, town, state, and country in, in response to this. Um, Brenda, I, Madam before you move on, can I, can I just echo something you just said about the pandemic? Oh, sure, sure. Um, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to really okay. echo what you're saying because I think it's really important. And um, I will certainly do my part to share out on the social media channels because I know a lot of people are feeling that pandemic fatigue. Um, mm -hmm. And as you are opening up and, and working tirelessly and, and your team has done an amazing job, the emergency man management team from Anthony and um, Mark in terms of restaurants, and, and I want to thank everybody. But... You know, I think people aren't appreciating that we still have to have a healthy respect for this virus and the science. And if cases begin to go up again, if they go up dramatically, it's important to recognize that, like, wearing a mask and the efforts and, and keeping that social distance, it's an effort so that we don't have to go to a place where we were back in March. So that what feels like an inconvenience um, is really just to protect us from that place that, you know, we, we all are trying to avoid, which was... Uh, the, the shutdown. So I, I just wanted to echo it, and I will do what I can to, to amplify your message here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I'd echo that I will amplify your efforts on this item as well. I did have one question related to COVID. I've heard a few people, um, and I would agree that, that all the department heads, this is a very trying time, and, and obviously things move. Um, at the speed of light, as, as you've uh, basically indicated here with, with changes that have impacted a number of things. Um, I have gotten a few questions related to uh, Penfield lockers and people not being able to park down at Penfield um, who have lockers and then make it difficult to use the lockers. Is there a... Do, are we aware of what the parking plan might be down at Penfield? Are they going to open those two additional lots? Uh, I understand crowd control and all that. I just am not sure how to answer those questions. So uh, the majority of those questions would, would be answered right in the newsletter. Um, I put specific information about parking and all of that 
and all the past newsletters are archived and you can click on them. Um, we are restricting the amount of parking because we're trying to restrict the amount of people on our beaches because we want to give right. people the opportunity to be uh, 15 feet away from each other, their blankets. So that's why right. we restrict parking uh, because we want to restrict access uh, to that. Sure. So that's why that's happening. Um, and any other additional sort of uh, technical questions about lockers and things, you can always just forward those to Anthony and he'll answer those, and then you could just forward those on uh, to anyone who asks specific questions about, um, you know, lockers and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, to be clear, I understood what was going on with the parking down there as well as the reasons why. It was more an issue of people uh, concerned that they were paying for these lockers and then not being able to park, and it was making it inconvenient to use the lockers that they were paying for and things of that sort. That's why I bring it up. That's all. Yeah, you could ask Nancy, but I'm pretty sure he offered refunds to anybody who didn't want to keep their locker. Oh, okay, because I did not hear that. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, as, as I'm sorry, I, I kind of lost my place on, on thinking. Um, uh, so, talking about what's been going on in our community and across our state and nation, last week after we had two uh, peaceful protests in town, I... Uh, I sat down with my chief of staff and members of law enforcement and uh, told, you know, talked to them about wanting to put on a forum. Obviously, um, it's, it's more difficult during, um, during a pandemic. I would have preferred to have a forum in an auditorium-like setting where people could ask questions and we could all be together, and I know we couldn't do that, but I wanted to do something because there, was, there were a lot of members of our community who were protesting, and I felt... Like, I just wanted to give people an opportunity to share their points of view with elected officials, with law enforcement, and to just share their feelings, basically. Um, and, and, and the whole intent of it was to sort of kick off the conversation as a community. And then, at, and, and as you both know, and I would uh, like to thank you both for uh, participating, and that I uh, appointed Nancy as a, a chairperson of a task force um, on uh, racial equity and justice, but that we are still in the uh, planning stages. Nancy and I are speaking more about it, just trying to make sure we're conforming with sort of, I know, Board of Selectmen guidelines on establishing uh, committees and task force and things of that nature. Um, I had some residents in our community reach out and, and ask that we have um, diversity on this, uh, task force and, and, and uh, Nancy is committed to doing that and we are going to be speaking more at length about that. Um, and I thought it was a good opportunity for people to just kind of uh, share their thoughts. I, I actually thought that we were going to have a problem because it was only allowing 100 people to be on it and um, we never got to 100, got to around about 70. But um, I, the reason I kind of the reason I set it up in the way that I did was because I wanted people to have enough time to be able to share and not anybody to feel like they didn't have a chance. And if we had sort of a back and forth format, um, even the first question that came out of the gate, I think there might have been close to 20 questions for law enforcement alone. And if we had an, a back and forth, that literally would have been the only caller who would have had the time. Uh, during the whole format. Format. So I just want to uh, share that with both of you and with anyone who's listening in our community to understand that, you know, it's not always easy when you're trying to set something up and and sometimes it does. It's not perfect. Um, but I wanted to at least give the opportunity for our community uh, to do that. And so I think it's going to just take a little bit of time for Nancy and I to figure out how how this is going to move forward. And I know. Um, Select woman uh, Lefkowitz wants to do a, a survey of sorts, and I, I think that's a good idea to do before even the, the formation of the task force. Because I think that would be uh, helpful information. And if uh, if you would like to speak more about that, Nancy, um, um, I I would, and I want to thank you because, um, you know, it's such a complex multifactorial issue, it's so devastating. People are angry and hurt, and I think acknowledging that as a community is important. Um, and I know that when you attempt to do something like this, there was criticism, and I want to speak to that because I think my preference is not to focus on what was wrong but what was right, which is that you are engaged and 
we as a town now are making a public statement, whether it's through this task force in part, um, which I see as a complementary effort to the work that has been done by grassroots activists here, by community members here. But for the town to come out and say officially that this matters, I think, is an amazing next step. And I want to thank you so much for that opportunity. Um, as you mentioned, I will be looking for a co-chair, uh, a voice in the black or brown community, someone who can, I think that's very important. Um, and we want to hear from uh, the diverse voices here and absolutely make that part of the task force. I am simply an engine here, someone who has the, the wherewithal and, and you saw that uh, in me and, and I absolutely looking forward to that challenge, but working 100% in concert with a co-chair, um, a voice, as I said, from the black or brown community and membership to also follow suit. Um, and a survey, yes, um, I agree important to get um, invested stakeholders to weigh in even on what could be in that survey and then to poll the town on what the community at large would want from a task force. And then, as you mentioned, there is a whole process through figuring out what that mandate will be, and we can um, use the input from the survey, the data. I'm working with someone in town uh, who has a data analytic background, school psychologist, and, and she's being very helpful. I'm only not mentioning her name because I haven't asked her permission. Um, and uh, right now, the task force is really an idea. It's a good idea. It's just we need to put structure and shape behind it and look forward, Brenda, to working with you to um, confirm that what that will look like. But in terms of timing, um, over the next few weeks, we hope to even have a draft survey to present to you, Brenda, that we can then blast out through our various networks, and then um, take a few weeks to give people the opportunity to answer it, and then from that really formulate uh, a thoughtful mandate, mission, agenda, and then open up for um, applications for membership. Okay. Yes. Well, I think that's a good uh, first step, and I think it's helpful and it gives people an opportunity to share their opinions and views. Uh, in a productive way. Um, I would uh, also uh, like to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, that I received a, um, I've received many uh, residents in our community asking for me to sign on to a pledge of mayors and city councils and police oversight bodies, um, which is a, a, it's called Commit to Action. And I spoke to, I didn't have, I, I finally had a chance to review it uh, late yesterday afternoon. And I spoke to our uh, Chief Liddy, our uh, Chief of Police, this morning. And we both agreed uh, that together, uh, the town and the head of law enforcement, we would sign on to the mayor's pledge. And so we, I did so today, as did Chief Liddy. And I would just like to uh, say that it says, uh, it's four points. It's review our police use of force policies. Two, engage in your community communities by including a diverse range of input, experiences, and stories in your review. Three, report the findings of your review to your community and seek feedback. Four, reform your community's police use of force policies. And so um, I just wanted to say that, that, that I did do that. Uh, as the uh, first select woman of Fairfield and our chief of police have done it. And um, I just would open it up if anybody would like to uh, have a conversation about this, either one of uh, anyone on board, Selectman, Tom or Nancy. So this is Tom. Um, I, Brenda, you forwarded this to me earlier. Uh, quite frankly, it, it's great that you signed the pledge and all that. Uh, even more importantly, um, it's the taking of the action. And I know from uh, past conversations with Chief Liddy and before him, Chief McNamara, uh, that they do review uh, their police use of force policies, and I'm happy to see that they'll be doing that again. I think they mentioned that at the forum uh, last week. Uh, number two, through your task force, uh, you're engaging the community um, and getting that diverse input, as Nancy spoke about, and that stories, those stories. 
Uh, you're also, Nancy, is committed through that task force to report back out, and that's what you've asked for. Uh, and then to the extent that all that comes with uh, the need to reform the policies, I'm sure that you, uh, working with Chief Liddy as well as the police commission, who's got a big role here, will do that. So it's, it's one thing to uh, sign that pledge. It's, it's quite another to actually um, take those steps and actually made good uh, on doing that anyway. And quite frankly, this pledge is really um, just good management practice uh, to, and when a situation like this resolves or happens rather results, uh, that you review your policies, that you engage your citizenry, that you report out the results and that you reform as, as required. So I think that's all um, quite good. And I look forward to hearing more about the work that's going to be done. Um, and I'll just add my thanks for that. I think um, it's a, an incredible statement to make to this community, um, Brenda, and, and with the chief, Madam First Leckman, and Chief Liddy. Um, and so I'm just I'm personally grateful, but I, I I know that a lot of people had reached out, and the fact that you were willing to before we close your file. Oops. Hello. Whoever has their phone off mute, can you mute it so we're not hearing the background noise, please? And uh, and I said, as I was saying, um, I just think it's it's really great that you're responding to the request of of many community members that had reached out and asked this of you and of the chief, and want to echo that um, it's really heartening. And I have great respect for Chief Liddy, who is has shown himself to be, especially in the last few weeks, very undefensive and open and really willing to be self-reflective and is, is talked about always wanting to do the work to improve and, and now is, is no different. In fact, he's really willing, engaged, and stepped up. And that list of questions that you had referenced um, that was 20 questions long, um, he had mentioned privately that he was already working on that and I think is working on the best format to get those answers out to the public. So. Um, I, I'm re just really thankful, and, and thank you again for signing this pledge. Thank you. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to uh, having more conversations um, as we move forward uh, together as a community during this uh, challenging time for our country. So if there isn't any, uh, if there is any additional items. Uh, that uh, either one of you would like to bring up or talk about? Um, Any, and anything on the, the fill issue that was also, I don't know if there is anything that you wanted to share, but. No, thank you. I, um, I, I sent out, it was I think the newsletter prior to last week's, yeah. um, the update that I had, um, I went and visited the fill pile with um, uh, my chief of staff, uh, my CAO and Brian Carey, just um, when they were beginning that week and they were just starting the sampling, the LEP that we had hired and that was approved, their protocol, their testing protocol was approved. So we went uh, there. I just wanted to kind of see the process, see what they were doing, and got an update from the LEP, which I thought was thorough and good, and I liked what they were doing. Um, and every day those samples are picked up and taken to a state lab. So as soon as that process is um, completed and the, the results and all of that, they're going, I will update as I get more information, but the next step is to get the results and then they'll put together a remediation plan and then submit it to DEEP for approval. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, um, but I, as, as I get more information, I will make sure to, to keep you updated and also send that out in the newsletter so that our community knows what's going on as well. Thank you. You're juggling enormous, enormous issues, and I just want to thank you for uh, for all the work. Thank you, Nancy. Is there any other items? All good, I'm all in. Okay. So can I uh, then get a motion to adjourn? I will move. So move. I will second that motion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion passes. Thank you, very much. Thank, thank you both very much. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. All right. Take care. This session is no longer being recorded.